so this patient's prescription tells us a lot about them. If you're a trainee pharmacist or a medical student, keep watching, and this is how I break down any drug history or prescription as a clinical pharmacist. Hi guys, my name is Tanmir, I'm a UK clinical pharmacist and a first year graduate entry medical student, so let's break it down. First up, we've got aspirin. So aspirin at a low dose has an antiplatelet effect, typically used for secondary prevention post MI, post ACS events, to reduce the risk of further heart attacks and risk of strokes. How does it work? Aspirin irreversibly inhibits COX enzymes to reduce thromboxane A2 to then stop um, platelets from clumping together and this then helps to reduce the risk of clots forming in arteries which is essential after a heart attack. We want to counsel the patient to take it with or after food and report or monitor for signs of any bleeding, particularly if the patient is on any other antiplatelets, any anticoagulants, any other NSAIDs or SSRIs which can all increase your risk of bleeding which this patient isn't on. So next up, we've got high dose of atorvastatin. So this is standard for second prevention post ACS, which again helps reduce any cardiovascular mortality and prevents further future MIs and strokes. How does it work? Statins work by blocking HMG CoA reductase to lower LDL cholesterol, which then helps to slow down any plaque progression and stabilize any existing plaques, lowering their risk of rupture. We want to counsel the patient to monitor any signs of myopathy because very rarely it can cause rhabdomyolysis and we want to monitor the patient's LFTs and lipids as well. Sopril is a beta blocker, again one of the drugs that is used post ACS, however looking at the patient's other drugs it also does suggest that they may have heart failure. It's a selective beta blocker which works by slowing the heart rate and slowing the heart uh, contractility and this helps to reduce the myocardial oxygen demand allowing more efficient filling of the heart and yeah, reducing strain on the heart is key in heart failure. We'd want to counsel the patient on signs of bradycardia or if they experience any significant fatigue to obviously contact their doctor. And also we'd want to monitor then their heart rate, blood pressure, all of for part two. Watching this video, you found it useful, please do hit the like button. Please drop me a follow. If you have any questions or any suggestions, then please drop them in the comments. Take it easy guys.